And Lane, you've been through coaching changes before, uh, obviously. You had tremendous success with Doug Peterson. Um, obviously, it's not the time of year where you have a ton of uh, contact with the coaching staff, but I'm sure Nick Sirianni has introduced himself. Guy shows a lot of energy. Uh, in some ways, you know, does it does the newness of something give you a, a little bit more energy uh, And as you're coming back for another season? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, having the new coaching staff and then having the record that we had last year, there's a lot of emphasis. There's a lot of, you know, pressure to to do better than that. And that comes from a lot from the players. So we know where we're staying. Uh, and really for the coaching staff, we hadn't really had an opportunity to get acquainted with everybody. I've, I've, I've met Coach Sirianni briefly before he had to go to a meeting. So uh, I had a little bit of small talk, but uh, we start virtual uh, OTAs uh, the 19th. So, That'll be a way where we, we get to learn the playbook and, and get that down and then hopefully have some in-person um, sessions, I guess, before training camp starts in, in uh, late July. Lane Johnson here with us on Birds 365. Change is what it is, and we all go through it in our lives, and you certainly as a now grizzled veteran NFL player have to be able to deal with that. Knowing that and that it's a pretty much all-new staff, how is important is it to you that Jeff Stoutland is actually staying a guy who you know as well as anybody else. He's going to be your uh, positional coach again. How important is that to you? Yeah, that was huge. I mean, uh, you had reports in the offseason that he may be going back to Alabama, this and that. But, you know, I was ecstatic that he stayed, uh, you know, putting in a lot of work with with him and my teammates over the past, you know, eight, nine years and, and really got to know him and, and really, the, I mean, he's a unique guy. He's uh, the way he teaches, the way he coaches, um, and you see the success that he's had with, with um, you know, maybe guys that aren't in the lineup having to deal with injuries and how he's uh, performed with, with having to do that, having interchangeable parts. So I, I think that says a lot about him. Uh, guys, uh, he treats everybody as if they're a starter. So if somebody goes down, um, it's the next guy mentality and you feel prepared. You know, that having Jeff back and, and, and Stout back, but also you're getting your buddy back right next to you, Brandon Brooks, and, and Jason Kelsey has decided to play another year. So in a lot of ways for the offensive line room, the band is, is, is getting back together. How's Brandon doing? You guys are close off the field as well. You guys are really close friends, and how excited are you to get him back? That's the best right side in football when you guys yeah. are right. Well, he's excited uh, coming off that that injury last year. So as uh, far as uh, being cooped up and ready to go, man, he's a ball of energy and uh, yeah, man, having Kelsey back too. So we're eager to get out there and perform. Uh, we're eager to keep our quarterback clean and, and get this offense rolling and, and looking how it should. So, um, you know, what fronts where it starts and I know we're eager to get the job done. So, you know, last year is unacceptable and, and we're here to change that. Speaking of your quarterback, that's another area of change. A uh, couple of years, Carson Wentz, the guy that you had to block for, and you probably have different assignments and certainly different mindsets with the individual that's back there behind you. You block differently for Nick Foles than you did Carson Wentz, and now you're going to have to block a little differently for Jalen Hurts. Got a taste of it right at the end of last year. What is the biggest difference between playing in front of a guy like Jalen Hurts as compared to Carson Wentz? Um, I think it may change uh, the way pass rushers rush the quarterback. You know, say there's guys that'll that'll rush different versus, um, say, a Tom Brady versus a Lamar Jackson, where you a lot of guys when they rush those type of guys that, that have the dual threat capabilities, uh, they're taught to keep contained sometimes and not really uh, bend around the edges. So it may make it easier in, in some instances, but when you have a guy like that, it, it – it makes it a little bit easier. It makes the defense uh, think a little bit because uh, you have a guy that can that can get out and, and beat you in multiple ways. Hey, Lane, you know, one of the silver linings, I guess, for the fact that uh, you were injured, Brandon was injured, uh, even JP at times, was was all those snaps the young guys got. What what kind of pride do you take in, in people like Jack Driscoll, Jordan Mailata, Andre Dillard, even though he was hurt, but – getting those mental reps. I know you work with Duke Mayweather and the offensive line masterminds, uh, you know, just kind of how much pride do you take in, in bringing those young guys along? And it, it, it was huge, uh, especially some of the situations that they were put in um, limited reps, but, you know, I've said this before, there's nothing that can really uh, simulate a game. 
And uh, the better or the more times that they got to play, the more games that they were in, I think you saw gradual and steady progress. You you could look at Malata, where he started and where he ended up in the season that he had. Driscoll the same way, uh, steady improvement. And that's what you want to see. And that, you know, it's a credit to Coach Stout and how he coaches. Like I said, he uh, he treats everybody as if they're a starter, um, how they should know their assignments, how they approach practice. So whenever things like this do happen, they're prepared. And um, I think with how they played shows, um, you know, why Coach Stout's so good.